Hello and welcome or welcome back to Westex. Today we wanted to share with you some of the ways that teachers help you to be your hashtag bestex. We want to share the why behind the strategies which you see or hear frequently in your lessons. For some of you this will be a recap, for others it might be the first time you were hearing about this. But after having six weeks summer holiday it's always good to have a recap so you can make a strong start to the year ahead. But before I begin I want to start with thinking about song lyrics. Yes, that's right, song lyrics. Now, I'm almost certain that most of you listening right now have a song that you know most of the lyrics to. It could be a pop song, a rap song, perhaps a TV theme tune, or even a theme tune from a cartoon or TV show you watched when you were very, very young. Personally, I only have to hear the opening line from The Prince of Bel-Air before I launch into full song. Now, I'm definitely showing my age here, and some of you probably haven't even got a clue what I'm even on about. Anyway. My point's this. Isn't that incredible that we can do that? I haven't watched that TV show in years, but I can recall the whole opening verse from memory. But how can our minds do that? Well, it's simple, really. On the board is a simple model of how we learn. In the case of the lyrics, in the learning environment, I'm making it a habit to watch the TV show. I'm actively listening. I'm focusing on the lyrics to the TV show learning them as they move from me thinking about them in my working memory. Now that's where information is temporarily stored and moving that into my long term memory where information is stored relatively permanently. Over time, I remember some of the words as I recall that information from my long term memory. I forget some, but the next time I watch the show, I remember the lyrics I've learned, make connections to a few more lines and repeat. Over time, the process of recalling these words and repeatedly singing in my best voice, of course, is helping commit all the lyrics to my long-term memory. This is no different from how learning takes place within a classroom environment. Teachers help manage that environment to ensure you're able to learn. We create that positive, supportive environment free from distractions so that you feel more comfortable, engaged and motivated to learn. Now, listen closely over the next few slides because there will be definitely audience participation, as well as a little quick quiz at the end where you'll see how much you can remember about the four strategies we're sharing today. And I'll even throw in a prize as an extra incentive. So back to where I first started. We want to share the why behind your teachers having certain strategies in the classroom that help to manage the learning environment to help information go from your working memory to your long term memory. We're going to take a look at the four strategies. By all your teachers using these strategies in a consistent manner across the whole school, it means that you know what to expect in whatever lesson you go to, which means you can focus more on the content of each of the lessons. Our first strategy today is what teachers call thresholding. Now, picture this. You turn up to your first lesson and your teacher greets you like this. You're late. Get sat down and hurry up writing the learning tension and date, otherwise you're going to be far behind. Compared to, good morning, Joe. Welcome back. It's great to see you making a prompt start to the work. How do you feel in the first scenario? A bit sad? Angry, perhaps? The why behind thresholding is easy. Those first interactions matter. We welcome you into our classrooms by physically standing at the doorway to help establish those expectations and behaviour and work to promote a welcoming, positive tone to the start of lessons and help build those positive relationships. This looks a little different in your PE lessons where you'll be lining up on the basketball courts, but the why is still the same, establishing and ensuring those clear expectations and starting the lesson in a positive way. The way your teacher greets you might vary from lesson to lesson, but it'll be something along the lines of welcoming you in a positive, upbeat way. Perhaps saying good morning or welcoming you back after a break, as well as encouraging you to make a start on the work if you are in a classroom. I've seen many teachers thresholding their classroom, but how many of you have been the first to say good morning back or ask the teachers how they are today? Why not try it and demonstrate one of our student attributes of kindness? And you're going to have a go at this in a minute. So simply, it is teachers greeting at the beginning of your lesson. But that first interaction with your teacher is so very important to help ensure a safe, positive learning environment and that sense of belonging. So now it's time for your turn. So I'm going to detail a few of the success criteria of when you turn up to your classes for the first time or every time you have a lesson, 
what you can do to make sure that your greeting is as warm as possible back towards the teachers. So one of the first things that you can do is actually just to look at your teacher making eye contact. This shows that you're focused, attentive and giving them your full attention. You can be clear and confident when you speak, you speak clearly. This demonstrates that respect and shows that you're actively gay, engaged in the interaction. Of course, use that polite tone and be respectful and try to avoid mumbling or speaking in a dis uh, disrespectful manner. That positive body language to make sure that you are showing that you're paying attention and that you're giving all your attention to your teachers. And then finally, active listening. to Make sure that you are potentially going to respond with maybe a brief response or thank you or continuing that conversation. So it might sound strange that we're going through these success criteria, but actually by practicing them on the daily, it's going to help you in the future for things like uh, interviews when you go to college or interviews for a job or when you have to have a, a more professional conversation with somebody when you're older. So we're going to have a little practice at this now. So on the board, you will be able to see that it says that you need to pair up. You might have to be in threes, but your teacher can manage it. And what I'd like you to do is I would like person one to say good morning uh, with those success criteria that you can see at the top in red. Uh, maybe repeat the good morning if you need to do it again. And then I'd like the second person to give feedback. Once that's done, if you swap over, um, then you can uh, repeat with person two um, and give some, each other some feedback. The teacher pauses the video here to allow for this practice. Great. I hope that you have some really, really good practice and I look forward to hearing all the great greetings at Threshold as I walk around the school. So moving on to our next strategy. Our next technique is the countdown and it does what it says on the tin, really. Your teachers are counting down and we do this because time is precious in the classroom. Your teachers have you for one hour at a time, potentially two, and need to make sure that we're making the most of every minute by measuring the time we can help you to ensure that no time is wasted and you know how long you have to complete the task. Your teachers will deliver this for you by giving you the instruction and then giving you time to action that instruction. And quite simply, it goes something like this. Pens down, eyes on me in three, two, one. Thank you. Simple, effective and immediately recognisable. Countdown is your signal to give the teacher your attention. Cold calling is our third technique for today. Now, this isn't to be confused with those people who call you from unknown numbers, trying to tell you that you had an accident that wasn't your fault. No, no. Instead, teachers will use cold call as a technique to encourage all of you to be prepared and ready to answer a question. Now, contrary to popular belief, teachers are not mind readers. So we use questioning as a technique in the classroom to check that you understand what we're teaching you. With cold call, we do this in a very particular way. Your teacher will remind you that we are cold calling. And this should signal that the teacher doesn't expect your hands to go up because we want you all to be thinking. Then we'll ask you a question, give you some more thinking time and then ask one of you. Now, remember what I said a moment ago. Cold calling is a technique to encourage all of you to think. So if I said, Joe, what is the capital of Spain? I can guarantee that if the capital of Spain didn't come to your mind immediately, then you might panic. But when you hear that the question's going to Joe in the first place, you'll probably think, oh, phew, thank goodness I'm not Joe. However, if we reordered the question and said, I'm going to cold call, what is the capital of Spain? Joe, during that pause, you are thinking hard in case you get asked to answer. It doesn't matter that we ask Joe because you are ready to help if Joe doesn't know and you have also done what we want to, students to do in lessons, which is think hard. So in summary, it's a no hands up questioning technique, but it is designed to focus your attention and ensure that everyone is actively thinking. And our final technique for today I'm sharing is the exit routine. And again, another one which pretty much does exactly as it looks, a routine for exits. 
Now, the end of lessons and actually physically leaving the lesson is really, really important. It helps you to transition from one lesson to the next in a really calm way to help to get you in the correct mindset for the next lesson and ensures a calm, orderly exit in the corridor, as well as promoting a sense of safety and security for all students. There are 1,300 students in the school, so this is really, really important. Again, the routine may vary from lesson to lesson, but your teacher will have the routine for where you put equipment or books at the end, and they may have an exit slide with pre-prepared questions that they can cold call key facts from the lesson or previous lesson to help commit that information to your long-term memory, before ultimately ensuring you leave in a calm way, row by row or quietly from the change rooms if you've had PE. So it's about packing away efficiently and leaving the classroom in a calm manner. Take a look at this little video where the students are leaving just as described. And what you can't hear in that is myself as the teacher wishing them the very best for the next lesson and I will see them tomorrow. So how closely have you been following? Uh, I'm going to give you five quick questions to answer and your tutor will be able to submit your score to be in with a chance of winning a prize. Now, for the first question, there are three marks available, one for each part of the learning model. Then it's only one mark for the rest of the questions awarded for a fully correct answer. So out of seven in total. Good luck. And I hope to see you all being your best ex this term. Pause here before the answers.